Hello, I'm Mabel Zhang. At this conference, we've been talking a lot about Medicare and Medicaid and, and the future of these uh, two systems, but Murray Aiken is here now, and he's with the Institute for Healthcare Informatics. And really, we should start focusing, or actually continue focusing, on other segments of the healthcare sector. Murray, can you expand on that? Sure. Uh, certainly, Medicare and Medicaid is getting a lot of attention, and that's important. Uh, but we felt that the privately insured under 65 segment is still going to be a very critical part of the healthcare system in 2020. Uh, we uh, know that the numbers are around 200 million Americans will be privately insured in, in 2020. Um, and their total expenditure, healthcare expenditure, uh, for those privately insured will be about $1.4 trillion. So this is still a very important part Absolutely. of uh, the healthcare system and one that if we're going to really bend the cost curve, uh, we need to ensure that we're tackling this part of the uh, health system as well as Medicare and Medicaid. And what are some of the strategies you've been looking at that would attack those? One issues? of the things we looked at uh, in our recent report was really this, the concentration on spending uh, among a relatively few, a small percentage of the total uh, membership of private insurance plans. This is not a new uh, finding, it's not a new phenomenon per perhaps, but it's always useful to remember that 1% of the members account for about 25% of the total costs, that 5% account for about 50%, 20% count for 80%, and also 50% of the members uh, account for just 3% of, uh, of, of private uh, health plan spending. So that level of concentration uh, really always needs to be front of mind as programs to try to tackle uh, utilization and costs are designed and implemented. Hmm. So what uh, what might we see change in the system uh, versus what we have now? I think we can see a, a much greater analytical approach to uh, really uh, identifying um, intervention programs that will meet the needs of segments and, and very small segments of, of patients. Uh, patients who carry uh, not just who, not, who are not suffering from just one disease but multiple diseases particularly the chronic uh, conditions um, and a more systematic way to uh, identifying who those patients are and what sort of programs can be used to, to manage uh, their care. Do we have the um, techno technological uh, support for that right. now or not yet? We, we think it, it exists. Um, there is always a demand for more data and, and a more systematic approach, but actually we would say we've already got large amounts tools. of data mm -hmm. and, and if those tools are really embraced mm -hmm. and used uh, effectively, then we can uh, see impacts on, on the cost and management of, of uh, patients. What are the barriers to those tools being implemented now correctly? I think uh, part of it is, is simply awareness. Uh, partly is uh, there's a lot of moving pieces in the health system right now. So here's another one coming in to be uh, introduced and, and implemented. So there's complexity with dealing with that. And then thirdly, um, any new system and new approach uh, ultimately will lead to someone changing their behavior. And we know that that's often the, the most difficult thing of all to tackle is, is real behavioral change. Right, and your parting words on, on this? Uh, we think that the privately insured under 65 uh, population and, and their utilization and spending on healthcare is, uh, is of critical importance in the overall healthcare system. Uh, that the management, effective management of chronic disease um, and the use of new approaches to uh, managing uh, members with chronic diseases uh, will really help uh, move the, uh, the cost curve down. Okay. Well, thank you for stopping by today. Thank you. Thanks for watching. I'm Abel Jones.